Did you know that 45% of young people are bullied before the age of 18? And 83% of those people are bullied are say this affects their self-esteem. Hey guys, my name is Tom Cook. Welcome back to this new episode, this new video. Um, I create small business owners and I help grow their results from anywhere between 20 and 200% in just a matter of months. So what have I got in store for you this week? Well, look, as you see from the subject title, this is about bullying. And when I, when I was younger, when I was at school, um, I was one of those kids that got bullied. And it was, it was horrible. It was horrific. Every single day I used to dread waking up and getting on the school bus to go to school because I didn't know what I was going to be tormented to. I didn't know what I was going to be facing each and every single day. And do you know what? The thing was, I didn't even get it that bad. I know there are, there are children out there, there are children in the past who, who get bullied horrifically. But whatever that level is, it's horrible. It's uncomfortable, and when you're when you're a child, when you're going through that, you don't really know what to do. You don't really know how to deal with it. And from my experience, I just I felt weak. I felt small. I felt helpless. I didn't know what to do. I I felt completely lost. And you know, it was it was the support of my parents um, that really got me through that. And I I remember one instance when my dad, you know, he stood up for me because I couldn't stand up for myself because my own self-esteem had been crushed so much, I wasn't able to stand up for myself. And I remember my, I remember my dad, you know, realizing I was being bullied, he, he, got, he got on the bus and, you know, he did his dad thing. <laughs> and um, he shouted at these bullies, you know, he, he, he stood up to them for me. And that was really powerful. And I remember looking at my dad then like, what a superhero. And, you know, I got on the bus after that instance and all the bullies were on the bus and they were just worshipping me like royalty. They were worshipping me like royalty. And it felt great. But you know what? Over time, it just went back to normal again. But the thing is, a lot of, a lot of people don't get that. A lot of people don't get that support. But here's the point I'm trying to make. Later in life, when you become adults, if you're put in a situation where you maybe you've got children, maybe you um, maybe you have young children in the family, uh, nephews, nieces, whatever. And if you were put in a situation as an adult and you saw the child getting bullied by somebody, any adult with a ethical and moral compass would put an end to that bullying. Would put a stop. Would say something there and then in the moment and go, "Hey, that's not good enough." Whatever they say, what they but that they, they'd put an end to it. They wouldn't tolerate it. An adult wouldn't tolerate that kind of behavior. But here's the thing. Why as adults do we tolerate the bully inside our head? You know, that little voice that always tells you you're not good enough, you're not capable, you're not sexy enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not smart enough, nobody's gonna believe you, you're ugly. All of these horrible things and yet we don't do anything about it. We tolerate it. That little voice, that bully inside our head, we tolerate it. We don't do anything about it. As adults, we've reached this stage where we're okay with that happening. We just let it slide. We go on with our day-to-day -day lives. But what we don't realize is that bully inside our head is holding us back. It's stopping us from doing so many things. So here's some things to help. Look, first off, take back conscious control. This is just, that little voice, that bully inside your head is just, a, it's just a program. It's just a program running, it's a subconscious program running over and over and over again. And a lot of it will be, if you were, if you were, um, if you were bullied as a youngster, a lot of it will be from that. It will be the program running it over in your mind. You know, you may have had instances in your life where, um, a teacher, a parents, or friends have, have said something off the cuff. They've said an off the cuff comment to you and that comment has stuck with you. It's stuck with you for the rest of your life and it sinks into your subconscious and stays there. And it constantly gets triggered, keeps getting triggered over and over again. So firstly, take back conscious control. Take back control. When you hear those thoughts, remember that it is a program. 
As Bob Proctor calls it, it calls a paradigm. This is a subconscious program in your head. So take back control, realize that. Second of all, here's something you can help, affirmations, incantations, um, declarations, whatever you wanna call them. Now, a lot of people find this quite woo-woo, they find it quite hokey. What, standing in a mirror telling me I love myself, telling me that I like myself and that I'm the best. That's a bit weird, Tom, I can't do that. No, that's okay, I understand. But what you wanna do, is what happens is if you just write down on a um, if you write down on a card you know some positive phrases about yourself you know I am amazing I do believe in myself I am capable I am powerful whatever that might be those little phrases just repeated over and over again begins to install a new program in your subconscious replacing the old the old paradigm, the old program that was running in your head telling you all the reasons why you can't do things, all the reasons why you're not good enough. So you replace that program. And over time you keep, you keep repeating, you keep the habit going, you keep saying your incantations, you keep saying your affirmations, and it starts to lock in. What's going to happen if you start believing in yourself? If that program running in your mind is set to one that you are capable, you do have the ability you are knowledgeable, you are powerful, you are confident. What results are gonna show up in your life when you start thinking in those kind of words, in those phrases, in that language? Amazing things. And look, your results are, ever gonna, are only ever gonna grow as far as your self-concept. If your self-esteem, your self-image, your self-ideals, whatever they're set to, if they're low, then your results are gonna be low. It's not about the level of action you're taking, it's about your self-concept, it's about your self-esteem, the ideals, the image. How you perceive yourself will affect your results. Also, make sure that you're celebrating your wins. We don't do this, as humans, we don't do this enough. With our children, um, you know, when they do something good, we reward them. Because then that locks in for them, they go, hey, I just got a reward for doing that behavior. Um, I got celebrated, I got a treat, whatever it was. Um, I'm gonna do more of that behavior because I get something out of it. And then as adults, we seem to get to this point where we're just like, oh, I don't need to do that anymore. That's not important. Of course it is important. Nothing changes. Your brain still wants to be rewarded for doing things good. If it does something good and then there's no reward there for it, it's just gonna go, hey, why do I need to do any more of that? I don't get anything out of it. I don't get any benefit out of it. So make sure all your wins, no matter how big or how small they are, and my clients who work with me, every call, we're celebrating wins. Every week we're celebrating the wins they've had because it's a boost to self-esteem, it's a boost to self-confidence, and it makes people realize how much progress they're making. So celebrate your wins no matter how big or small. And lastly, demand more of yourself. Demand more of yourself than you've ever demanded before and commit to it. What do I mean by that? Look, you gotta, you gotta search within yourself to find that inner strength, to find that inner power to create more action, to create more, to do more, to have more in your life. You gotta work harder than you've ever worked before. Why? Because that's gonna shut that little voice. That little voice wants to keep you comfortable. It wants to keep you at a low level. It wants to keep you playing a small game because it doesn't wanna go out there and do anything crazy. It doesn't wanna do anything scary. So it keeps you comfortable. It keeps you contained within a very small box. But when you demand more of yourself, when you commit and you get out there and you do more stuff, you take more action with your new confidence, with your self-esteem, a, you're going to boost that confidence in your self-esteem, but you're going to see the greater results in your life. You're going to see incredible things happen. You're going to then start to give yourself the evidence that you can do it. Hey, I'll give you a situation. You know, when I did uh, when I did one of my first programs, you know, I, everybody was telling me, "Hey, Tom," I was obviously nervous, and everybody was telling me, "Hey, Tom, you're going to be fine. You're going to be good. You're going to be great. Don't worry about a thing." And you know what? Deep down, I think I kind of. I understood what they were saying and I agreed with them, but I still didn't fully believe myself. I still didn't believe, fully believe myself. But no matter what, I broke through my fears anyway. I did my program. It was a fantastic one day event. Um, everybody loved it and I loved it as well. And then at the end of that, I was like, huh, I can do it. 
I am capable. I do know what I'm talking about. And with that, I was able to use that as evidence for myself to challenge my little voice. Because my little voice would be like, hey, Tom, you can't do it. What are you doing? Uh, you're, you're not capable. And I could go, hang on. I physically got the evidence. I physically got the memory and the experience showing you that I can do it. And that self-evidence is going to serve you very, very well when you come on to do your next challenge. Whatever it might be, whatever you need to do to get outside of your comfort zone, to demand more of yourself, to commit to more and taking more action, whatever that is, having that evidence with you is going to support you. It's going to push you forward. It's going to propel you to new heights. That's what this is all about. New heights equal new, new results. Hey guys, look, I hope you enjoyed this video. Look, the bully inside your head, do not let it win. Get it out. You wouldn't tolerate bullying with, with uh, small children, your, your children, nieces, nephews, whoever. So don't tolerate it in your head. Make a change. You're an adult. Step up. Beat it out. Guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Please, as always, um, just click subscribe. You know, if you know somebody who'd benefit from this video as well, share it with them. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Until next time.